Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am thrilled to be able to share with you select poems from the brand new issue of Down the Dirt magazine. I'm a literary magazine editor of two magazines, Season D magazine and Down the Dirt magazine. Down the Dirt was just released with a December 2022 issue, volume 202, titled The Cool Cold, which for people who are like us that are now moved to southern states, it's a little on the warm side, obviously, but um, the idea of having cold up north ugh, is ever so strong and ever so prevalent, which is thought it was totally, totally perfect to have this for a cover, um, based on accepted writings and titles within the book. But I was going to first share with you a poem that is in this, aha, I could just open the page for it, following a piece of prose that somebody sent me about a periodic table element about aluminum. So I thought I would read my poem, Aluminum. Not only does it appear in this Down in the Dirt book, which I just showed you, what am I doing? But it also appeared in the Periodic Table of Poetry, which is a Scars Publications book that covers all of the poems. It was written before all of the elements had names. <laughs> um, and I think the cost is the representation of elements 1 through 118 of the Periodic Table. $11.18. So it's a huge book with a lot of stuff if you're into science. <laughs> but I thought I'd share with you this one poem that I did as a follow-up for somebody's writing about the periodic table element aluminum. This is the poem Aluminum. On our wedding anniversary, I try to remember annual wedding gifts. So we've passed wood, copper, iron, we're just passing tin, steel, and aluminum now. But what on earth do I buy for a gift? That's aluminum. I don't think he wants an aluminum briefcase, aluminum picture frames, magnets won't work on our stainless steel fridge. Brushed aluminum wall tiles over the kitchen sink might be a good idea, but it's hardly an anniversary gift. The beaten square aluminum cufflinks look pretty good, but I think the only time he wore cufflinks was on her wedding day. So, really. Aluminum? <laughs> oh, I suppose the pliability of aluminum shows how our marriage needs to be flexible and durable. And like aluminum, which can be bent without being broken, we have to learn to bend to each other's will so that we can be stronger when we're together. And we are. With the low density of aluminum, it is the third most abundant metal element here on Earth. But the thing is, the aluminum metal is too reactive chemically to occur naturally, natively on Earth. So it's usually found combined in ways with over 270 different minerals. So we see aluminum because it mixes well with others. Good thing it's pliable, ductile, malleable. Better thing that it's better thing that's durable and to withstand that test of time. And the thing is, I I've studied these elements and see how they are needed in the human body. And despite aluminum's abundance on Earth, it actually has no known function in biology. <sighs> well. It's remarkably non-toxic, but because in the body it competes with calcium for absorption, it might even lead to osteoporosis. Okay, I, I won't eat this element. <laughs> I won't use it in cookware. A good thing I don't need antacids, which may contain aluminum. And although I've never seen aluminum in antiperspirants, some researchers have postulated that using antiperspirants with aluminum may increase the risk of brain cancer or breast cancer and, and potentially Alzheimer's disease. Good news for the woman with breast cancer in her family history. And great news for the woman with a previous brain injury. So I should watch for Alzheimer's disease. And now that I have more reason to worry about ingesting this non-toxic aluminum. It's funny. Aluminum was first used in car engineering and architecture. Those must have been the strong cars and buildings. Wait. They, they were durable, but also, I'm afraid, flexible for, for cars and buildings. 
But then aluminum was used in jewelry and fashion, and kind of like those cufflinks, I suppose. Hmm. In the meantime, I'm going to grab some leftovers from the fridge, get it out of the aluminum foil, and eat before pondering what his anniversary present should be. <laughs> As I close the page on that poem for aluminum from the Down in the Dirt book, The Cool Cold, perfect for a December release from um, Down in the Dirt magazine, Scars Publications, that poem also happened to be in the book from Scars Publications, The Periodic Table of Poetry. Dun, dun, dun. I have to show off my covers anyway, I can. Um, these two books are available for sale through Amazon, but I'm not going to be selling them here about sharing poetry. And I'm not even going to share any more periodic table poetry with you. I'm going to share with you a couple of poems from the back of this book. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I have to give a noise for it. Uh, this first one, this first one's a short one. This title, Value from Nothingness. The unemployed lie around and do nothing. But those who work vacation so they can lie around and do nothing. What is the value of nothingness? Is the universe filled with nothingness or dark matter pulling on us, tugging on us, affecting us. What is the value of nothingness? <laughs> on that note, I'm going to skip the middle poem. I'm going to have maybe two more poems for you here. This next one's the last poem in the book. It is titled, Utopia of Planitia. Titan and the Kuiper Belt. Poet Janet Kuiper likes to share these things, so hope you enjoy. This is Utopia Planitia, Titan and the Kuiper Belt. I'm such an astronomy geek that when Pluto was demoted from planetary status, Janet Kuiper's here was pleased that Pluto was an icy ball from the Kuiper Belt. But I'm getting a little bent out of orbit whenever I hear astronomical info to find that Star Trek mentioned it to me first. Got a globe of Mars, and when I squinted and read the name of the northern ice cap, Utopia Planitia, I remembered how the Enterprise D was built on Utopia Planitia. Or after hearing how astronomers like to study Saturn's moon Titan because it has all the elements of Earth when it first became a planet, that's when I hear on a Star Trek rerun how Ensign Wesley Crusher, for training, did a Jaeger loop around Titan. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to fly anyone on a one-way trip to Mars, and two Enterprise ships were built there. <laughs> We're trying to learn about Earth's history from Titan, and a young pilot was doing tricks around that moon just to show off. <laughs> well, we might not have warp drive on our side, but if our scientists can take their cues from science fiction, when we're catching up on Star Trek, or any character from that show, we, they won't match our knowledge of the final frontier. Last poem in the book, which mentions the Final Frontier, which has an issue collection book that is titled The Final Frontier, which I might read from later, maybe not, but The Final Frontier uh, from Down in the Dirt magazine. Um, that is in there, but what I am going to share with you is one more poem toward the back of this book. I skipped it, haha, -ha, so that I can go to this poem, which is titled Xing Out Lives. Um, it is currently not in any other book, but it is slated to be published in the cyberwit.net um, Janet Kuiper's poetry book in 2023 that's titled Testament. Uh, first portion of the book is all about po ro ro post Roe v. Wade poetry. Uh, this is the tentative title for Testament. Testament? What am I trying to show it off for you? Um, it also happens to appear, I'm trying this you guys, in Down in the Dirt magazine. Uh, the Cool Cold 
isn't it ever so cool, people? <laughs> but this is one poem that I thought you would like, and it'll be the closing poem in this reading for you guys, and it is called Xing Out Lives. A male misogynist co-worker, and I'll make the money while she raises my kids in my house kind of guy, knew a woman from out of state in a really abusive relationship after she discovered she was pregnant from a boyfriend who terrified her, refusing to wear a condom, would say she's stupid enough to get pregnant. She had to terminate the pregnancy before the boyfriend found out. So this male misogynist co-worker asked if she could stay at her home for a few days while recovering. Of course she could, and of course we would. We welcomed her, gave her whatever space she needed to physically and mentally recover. It broke. It broke our heart when she felt bad that she bled. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Worry about you. And it broke my heart that, that me, the stranger, couldn't just wrap my arms around her and tell her everything would be okay. But the one thing we did notice about our male misogynistic co-worker is that after he helped her, after he saw what being a male misogynist could do, how it could break a human being so, he began to understand the potential error of his ways. He, he was changed, and I am woe to say it only came after seeing the culmination of Xing Out Lives that changed him. Whose life was worth Xing Out, people ask. And this is the balancing act we all perform. For this one man, maybe the true fear of one woman, her fear of being X'd out by one man, meant it was necessary for her to X out something before it became life. Karma works in funny ways, where one woman is almost destroyed so a man could see salvation. You've heard the references before. A butterfly flaps its wings in Tibet and a rainforest burns in Brazil. Or after one woman is raped, she learns to make life better for all women. Maybe I saw that here in my no longer misogynistic man for him to see the light as it were and truly understand which lives are really worth saving. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you appreciated that reading from uh, books like Periodic Table of Poetry and the Future Book Testament as well as down the dirt book, The Cool Cold, The Cool Cold. Um, thank you for listening. I'm doing this in honor of the poetry open mic that is on the first Wednesday of every month that is closed down due to the pandemic. I keep the spirit alive, I keep creativity alive, I keep poetry alive, and I hope you guys are keeping creativity alive too, staying creative, staying strong, and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you very, very soon. Thank you all so very much. Thank you.